Hello, I'm Jerry from Quilt Crazy. This video is a way to determine if Cubot and your frame are calibrated properly. I'll cover in general what is calibration, why you need it, as well as how to check the calibration. I have a separate video that walks you through the calibration process step by step. First, what is calibration? Previously, with versions 1 and 2 of Cubot, there was only one size wire available for lighten up for drive motors. As such, there was no need to change calibration. With release of version 3 and version 3 Pro, Lighten Up made two additional wire sizes for use. You can get standard, heavy duty, super heavy duty. The difference in these is the thickness of the wire. When changing the wire size, Cubot needs to know how far it has traveled for each rotation of the drive wheel. Standard is intended for those who do a lot of hand control and ruler work. Heavy duty is intended for those who have a heavy mixture of controller and hand work. Super heavy duty is intended for those who only occasionally do ruler and hand work. The thickness or the gauge of the wire is what affects the distance the head moves for each rotation of the wheel. The following is not how Cubot works, but is intended as a non-technical example to help you visualize how it works. So please, Cubot does not use bicycle wheels and spokes, etc. For a simple example of how Cubot moves your head, think of a bicycle wheel. Each time the wheel path turns, the bicycle moves a certain distance. This distance is based on the size of the wheel and the size of the tire. Each revolution also means that some number of spokes have passed a certain point, like the top of a fork. So if a wheel is 24 inches in circumference and has 24 spokes, each time the wheel turns one full rotation, the wheel has moved 24 inches and 24 spokes have passed the fork. If 12 spokes pass the fork, the wheel has moved 12 inches. If one and a half spokes have passed the fork, the wheel has moved one and a half inches. The same thing very, very generally happens to Cubot. The drive wheels and the motors turn as you move the head manually. Cubot uses the turning of the wheels to tell in what direction and how far the head is moved when the motor is not running. So for our example, if you change the size of the tire in a wheel, think thicker or thinner, the distance traveled by the wheel changes. Although you can't change the size of the tire, in Cubot would be the wheel, you can change the size of the wire wrapped around the wheel. The larger or smaller wire size changes the drive wheel more or less distance for each rotation, like, like how many spokes pass the fork for each revolution. Changing the wire size without telling Cubot will result in an incorrect number of motor rotations and your design size will not be what you requested. As you move the quilt head, Cubot is keeping track of where it is, left, right, as well as front and back, like how many spokes have passed. Any time Cubot is calculating distances, you should move the head fairly slowly. Not turtle pace, but not rabbit pace either. The drive wheels on the motors turn as the mover heads manually. Cubot uses how many times the wheels turn to tell what direction and how far the head is moved, even when the motor is not running. Think of a bicycle wheel. The faster you turn the wheel, the faster you have to count the spokes. If you turn it fast enough, you can miss a couple of the spokes that have passed and you count would be incorrect. Even though computers are very fast, Cubot can miss a spoke or two if you move too fast, resulting in an incorrect calculation. Slow movement assures Cubot knows how many turns or parts of a turn have occurred in any direction, like counting the spokes. How do I know if a calibration is off and what happens if it isn't correct? If you mark out a row that you know is 45 inches wide from border to border, and the calculated distance shown in Cubot is say 44 and an eighth inches, or you know that the width is 45 inches and you tell Cubot to stretch a design edge to edge to 45 inches, and a stitch out only comes out to be 44 and a quarter inches, or if you tell Cubot to move down five and a quarter inches for the next row in an offset, and it only moves five or some other distance, 
you likely have a calibration error and need to recalculate. I recommend recalculating every time you change wire, even if you're using the same size wire as before. I also recommend the distance style calibration over the calibration factor style. You can only calibrate for the x-axis. The y-axis calibration will be the same as long as you follow the wire size rule. The wire size rule is you must use the same size wire on the y-axis as on the x-axis. I do not recommend using braided fishing wire or any other wire that is not sold by Lighten Up. Because how much is your labor and time worth? And what about the assurance that it's correct? You really don't use that many wires anyway. Uh, you put a lot of money in this hobby or business, better products tend to better results. So let's get to calibrating. One thing before we get to checking the calibration, Lighten Up Technology is offering a very special deal on their laser. Uh, see at the very end of this video for more information. And also in the description for this video, you'll see a special link. All right, we'll start. Uh, now, calibration can only be adjusted on version 3 and version 3 Pro. Previous versions, V1 and V2, do not have the ability to calibrate. Uh, I'm using V3 Pro on this demonstration, but it's exactly the same on version V3. It is very important that you must be using the same size wire on both the X and the Y axis. So if you're using the standard wire, it's going to be the same on both. Heavy duty, same on both, or extra heavy duty, same on both. You can only calibrate the X axis. This is why you must be using the same wire on both motors. The same calibration is used by Cubot for both motors. This would be a quick and easy way to check to see if you're in calibration. If you have a quilt loaded, uh, you'll just need a ruler. I suggest using a metal ruler or a wooden yardstick. If you don't have a metal ruler and you have a Harbor Freight store near you, it's a good resource for these metal rulers. They're available in different lengths and very inexpensive and reasonably accurate. In this video, I'm using a 40 inch ruler. If you use a wooden yardstick, check to see that it's accurate. I no longer suggest using cloth or fiberglass tape measures. They're often not very accurate, and we're really looking for accuracy. You could use a metal carpenter's tape, also known as a yo-yo, but you need to find a, a way of keeping it from moving during the process. If you do not have a quilt loaded, you can pin your take-up leader to your top leader. The best, most accurate tool for this is a laser. I only recommend the one used by Sol made by Salt Lighten Up Technologies. It's a compact focus later with a very bright dot that is super sharp. It's battery operated, rechargeable, with a battery life that lasts a very long time. I use mine every day on every quilt and only have to recharge the battery about once every three weeks. At the end of this video, I'll show you a way to get one of these great lasers from Lighten Up Technologies for a limited time with free shipping. For this demonstration, I will not use the laser for those that have not yet purchased one. But you're going too soon, right? I will use a presser foot to check the distance. Uh, I would not recommend using a spoon foot for this unless it has a fairly large needle hole, as you'll need to see the markings on the rulers through the hole in the spoon. Uh, with a regular presser foot, you use either the left or the right edge of the foot, foot as long as you use the same for both measurements. First step is to lay the ruler horizontally on the quilt. Uh, make sure it's parallel to your belly bar, as you can see in this photo. What we're going to do is we're going to mark a point with pattern quilting at the beginning of the measurement. Then we will zero it out and uh, move it across the ruler in different points to check the calibration. By comparing the actual distance moved with the calculated distance on the X factor, we'll be able to determine if calibration is needed. So first, let's start Cubot. Press pattern quilting. To begin with, move our head to the zero part of the ruler. You'll see on the left hand side in the upper part of your screen a little blue box with a zero zero in it and two little uh, arrows. 
press that button and it will zero out both the delta factors and the coordinates to zero, 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 zero. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to slowly move our head across the ruler till we get till 10 inches. Although the 10 inch has no, it could be any number you want. I'm just going to use 10 inches in this demonstration. If you're using a laser, it's not necessary to use the offset. You can or can't or not, doesn't make any difference. So we'll slowly move our ruler, or our head, excuse me, across the ruler. And for this, I suggest that you move the head very slowly. And once we get it right at 10, we'll take a look at our X and Y factors. Uh, you'll notice that on this particular case, it shows that I've moved 10 and a quarter inches. That's an immediate notice that this head is out of calibration. Now I've put my analytic file operation on purpose to let you see what happens when it's wrong. So uh, it's not necessary to press select, but if you do press select the point, then we'll be using from this point on, we'll be using only the delta factors. So we're going to then move the head an additional amount. In this case, we're going to move to 20 inches and try and get it right on 20. And you'll notice that uh, uh, Qbot has said that I've moved 20 and a half inches. So you can already see that in 20 inches, I'm off by half an inch already. Um, of course, your numbers are probably not going to be this uh, drastic. They'll be, you know, a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Uh, if it's only a hundredth or a couple hundredths of an inch, it's probably how accurately you're putting the head right at that mark. So, um, we'll do one more here. We'll move the head to 30 inches. And in my case here, uh, I'm three quarters of an inch off in only 30 inches. So, obviously, it needs a lot, <laughs> needs a lot of recalibration. Uh, Now you can also calibrate, or you can't, excuse me, you can also check the y-axis, but you cannot calibrate for the y-axis. So what you would do if you wanted to check your y-axis is place your ruler vertically on your quilt and do the same process that we just did, except we're going to do it vertically instead of horizontally. So I lay my tape up here. I'm going to put my head right at zero. Let's see here. And I'm going to press select. What's this going to do is it's going to set my delta x and y factors to zero. Now I'll move my head down to, in this case, six inches and it says that I've moved 6.03 inches. If I move it down to 12, it says I've moved 12.19, so almost a quarter of an inch off. This just confirms that I need calibration. And once you recalibrate for the X, your Y should fall right in line with it. So I hope this has been uh, of use to you. Uh, if you found this uh, video useful, um, two things, please select the like button and also select subscribe so you can see some of the additional videos that I'm going to do. I also have a have redone the video on how to recalibrate to a uh, faster, more even more accurate way uh, that you can set your calibration. Uh, again, this is Jerry from Quilt Crazy, um, and thank you. The fine folks at Lighten Up Technologies, the Cubot folks, are offering a special deal on their laser with a special link that you'll find in the description. Uh, the special offer is free shipping on any laser purchased through this special link through March of 2022. The only caveat to this is it's only available for US shipping. It cannot be used for international shipping and it must be done by March of 2022 and only available with the special link. Uh, I believe that 
every Cubot person should have one of the Cubot lasers. It's a great laser. It's a focused, battery operated, lasts a long time on the battery, and is rechargeable. Uh, I use it on every single quilt that I do, and I do over 100 quilts a year. Uh, I also, on my long arm, have a needle laser that shines uh, a laser right where the needle goes through the fabric. I use the Cubot one rather than that one because it works so much better and it's so much easier to use. So look in the description and use that link. Um, I'm not affiliated directly with Cubot or Lace Lighten Up Technologies and I get no compensation out of this. This is strictly a special deal for you to save money on the shipping.